Hey everybody, welcome back to GVN's Amiga CD 32 month. Uh, for this retrospective, we're now going to start diving into the games. Um, there was actually about 170 plus games that were released for the system in its short span from 1993 to 1996. Uh, and only a small percentage of that made it into the U.S. So about 80% roughly uh, of the games are only uh, encoded for PAL regions. However, you know, due to that nifty trick I mentioned in the last video, some of those uh, PAL games are actually playable on NTSC systems, um, but the rest are not without, you know, some minor issues. But uh, enough about that. Let's jump right into the fr into the games, okay? The three games I'm going to be talking about today are Pinball Illusion, Pierre Le Chef Out to Lunch, and Deep Core. So uh, let's dive right in and get started. Starting off, we're going to talk about Deep Core. This is a 2D action platformer game that pretty much has you running around a uh, maze-like environment trying to find out what's going on in some kind of uh, underground nuclear facility. The uh, opening sequence is actually rather confusing uh, at first, but as you progress, I mean, it starts to clear up as you're actually some kind of agent just checking out this facility and fighting off a bunch of uh, robots and aliens. The, uh, the graphics, as you notice right away, are actually pretty nice. They're huge, the environments are well designed, they have, they're very colorful, the, uh, the sprites of the uh, enemies look real good, and uh, overall I have to say it's pretty impressive. I do like the little water effects that you have right there, but that's pretty standard for uh, you know games of this kind back in the uh, days of the Amiga. The game controls um, are definitely a mixed bag. I've definitely had issues with controlling my character using the standard Amiga D-pad, mainly because in this game you actually press up to jump. In fact, that is an issue in a lot of Amiga games where you press up to jump. So, using the standard Amiga controller, I've actually had to switch out and opt for the Competition Pro, which actually has a more solid-feeling D-pad, which is similar to a Sega Genesis controller. One of the other issues I have to say with the game is the fact that the character kind of feels slow, and my final gripe is pretty much when it comes to elevators or doors in general. You have to, like, position yourself perfectly in order to activate the door in order for you to go through it. The level layouts of the game, and there's about nine levels, they're pretty maze-like. You can practically get to a point where you can loop around in a level, and you have to find a series of keys in order to get through certain doors. Usually they're labeled A, B, C, and D. And uh, there's also upgradable uh, weapons that you can collect throughout the game. It's, it feels almost like a, uh, a, 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 a mini uh, Metroid-inspired game. Enemy placements um, are actually, you know, not well thought out. Like, in some areas, like, you'll see these uh, giant crushers that'll come down, and they will have an enemy on the other side who will, the moment it runs, will rush you down and explode dealing you for a lot of damage. In fact, that's another issue with this game, is the fact there's a lot of areas where damage is just unavoidable, and it makes your gameplay uh, experience rather sour. There's really not much I can say in terms of uh, music, because outside of the opening intro and the uh, title screen, there wasn't much except maybe a little bit of ambient noise throughout the stages. Um, the last grape I had was, I said, was the difficulty. Like I said, there's the unavoidable damage and the controls, and, uh... It's just a hard game overall, so if you're interested, I mean, this could be a game that you can try if you can tolerate the, uh, the, the slow gameplay, but definitely check it out when you can. Our next game on the list is Pinball Illusions. Pinball Illusions is the third pinball game developed by Digital Illusions. Uh, other games in the franchise include Pinball Fantasy and Pinball World, which is actually a port to the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. Right away, once you st start the game off, you can already notice that the game has an amazing soundtrack, which is uh, really good, especially for each specific table. Um, my personal favorite has to be the uh, Extreme uh, Sports table, which has a nice hardcore sound to it. Um, the Babe Watch table is actually pretty uh, nice to listen to as well, because it actually sounds like you're in kind of like a country-style bar. It's nice, it's relaxing while you're playing a game of pinball. In fact, pinballs usually were found in bars back in the day, so it seemed rather fitting. As for the rest of the sound effects, they actually sound rather generic with the, uh, the pinball bouncing around, uh, the sound of the flippers as they hit the ball, the uh, 
points and the uh, bells and whistles as you know each uh, trigger is activated on the table. It sounds really nice. It, it, it sounds very generic uh, and authentic to uh, you know classic pinball tables. Now, what I really like is um, the pinball table designs themselves. I really think that they're really nice to look at. They're very colorful. The art designs throughout the table are very good. Something you would definitely see inside an authentic pinball table. The uh, other thing I really like about it is pretty much the layout. The layouts are pretty well thought out. They're, they have all kinds of bells and whistles for you to target and hit to get your bonuses and whatnot. I also like the way the game controls overall. On the uh, really w awkward D-pad, it's actually rather easy to just, you know, hit the flippers in order for the uh, the game to progress. You know, you press left on the D-pad, you can press the uh, the adjacent button on the opposite side of the controller to activate the flippers. You have the trigger buttons, which actually act as uh, the way of tilting the table. The one thing I actually found rather funny is when you go into the menu, the main menu, they have an option there to actually let you read the manual. And it's kind of funny that once you get to the uh, page three of the manual, I believe, that it actually tells you the controls for how to operate and navigate through the menu system. Um, I just thought that was kind of silly. Overall, Pinball Illusions is a very solid pinball game. Granted, it's not like one of those over-the-top arcade pinball games that we have uh, seen released, like Crewball or anything else uh, more recent, but it's, it's still a solid, addicting game, and I really enjoyed Pinball Illusions. Um, if you actually ever have a chance, I would definitely either pick this one up or the one that I prefer, which was Pinball Fantasy, mainly because the soundtracks are phenomenal, and it's just overall an addicting game. And our final game of the video is Pierre Le Chef Out to Lunch. Now please don't be alarmed, this is a very deceptive looking game. This is actually a really good game where the uh, platforming is top notch and the challenge is amazing. One of the things I really like about the game of course is the graphics, which as you notice right away is on the cutesy side. And the sprites are rather small, but they're extremely detailed if you look at them. I mean you can definitely see the uh, detail to like let's say the tomatoes, you can definitely tell them apart from the mean tomatoes that will be chasing you down later in the game. One thing I also like is the graphical layout of the stages as well as the backgrounds. Each stage is actually centered around the theme of a country and there's about six countries in the game with about eight stages each. Some of the country stage themes actually range from like the Swiss Alps in Switzerland with a lot of snowy fields and you can see the mountains in the background or the tropical forests of the West Indies. All the stages uh, overall are nice and colorful to look at, they're well detailed, and I have to say that the uh, backdrops are pretty impressive as well. Now the music for Out to Lunch is actually pretty decent in my opinion. It's got a nice upbeat catchy tune for each of the worlds. Now unfortunately that's a, a problem right there because there's only one song that you hear for each world and it's for every stage in that world. The sound effects are pretty decent for the most part, I mean they get the job done. The, there's just the standard sound effects of like whenever you get hit or you get dizzied or if you jump on an enemy and hear them disappear. Nothing truly memorable that stands out to be truthfully honest in regards to the sound effects though. Now as I mentioned earlier, Out to Lunch does look like a deceptive, simple little game. The objective sounds pretty straightforward. You run around all the levels trying to capture all the fruits and vegetables and then throw them in a cage. However, that's pretty much where it ends. As you progress further into the game, the levels become bigger and more maze-like. You now have enemies that actually come out of nowhere and attack you, and if you get hit, any fruit and vegetable that you have collected will actually start to escape and run away from you. Also, every now and then, a bad chef will pop up out of nowhere on certain stages, and he will run up to the cage where you're keeping your fruit and vegetables and release them. Once you've finally collected enough fruit and vegetables, the door to exit the stage will appear and then you will be able to progress to the next stage. As you progress farther into the game, like I said, it, the difficulty starts to ramp up as the stages themselves now become more of an obstacle that actually make it harder for you to capture the fruits and vegetables. Not only do you have to avoid the large amount of killer fruit and vegetables and bees that will be coming at you, now you gotta make more difficult jumps to reach the platforms that are higher up above you just so you can get to the fruits and vegetables. 
You do get some items throughout the stages in order to help you on your quest. You can pick up a flower bag, which will allow you to throw it at enemies and stun them temporarily. You pick up the net, which is actually the only essential item in the game. That way you can capture the fruit and vegetables that you need to progress in the game. And you can also get other helpful items like the shoes that allow you to walk in snow without slipping all over the place. One of the things that actually surprises me is how well the game plays. Thankfully, as a platformer, you actually get to use a buttons on the controller to jump and navigate your character, as opposed to pressing up like other platformers on the Amiga CD32. This is a godsend, and despite how clunky the D-pad feels, the game controls perfectly fine, as a matter of fact. Overall, I think Pierre Lechef, Out to Lunch, is one of the best platformers on the system. It is also out for the Super Nintendo if you want to check out that port. However, if you're an Amiga collector like I am, you definitely want to pick up this game and try it out. Thank you very much for watching the very first video of the uh, games of the Amiga CD32. Just so you know, there are plenty more videos coming your way with even more unique games to check out. Until then, keep on gaming.